Um, I may have already said too much on this subject, but I'll, uh, I'll just say the whole thing again. Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, I will say this, that uh, as a uh, young kid, and there was a, a teacher of mine, Mr. Sherry, hoped to be here, but we got socked in by the snowstorm, so he wasn't able to make it. Um, he and I, when I was about 14 years old, uh, stumbled on a website that would be my most frequently visited website between the ages of 14 and 18, and that is the 100 best um, American political speeches of all time. And um, a lot of these, you know, there was like the cross of gold speech that was in that. Uh, uh, some of these were um, Dr. King's. The, the number one speech on the list is actually a, an incredible speech by uh, Dr. King. Um, but the New Frontier speech was also on there. And the one thing that inspired me that I think we all need to hear now but that nobody, and, and nobody on either side of the political spectrum is saying right now, uh, but that I do hear from my peers, that I do hear from this generation that is ready to pick up the mantle, which is that, you know, he was talking about the, the race into space and towards the moon, and he said, we do not do these things because they are easy, but we do them because they are hard. We do them because we feel we are capable, and I'm paraphrasing now, because we are capable of doing them, and because the generations that come after us um, will benefit from them. That is an ethic that is not in American politics today. Uh, and that is something that our elected officials are not asking of the people today. You know, in every election, it is still about what will our country do for you and your family? What will um, your representatives do to, uh, uh, to fix your pocketbook? to improve your lot in life. And nobody is asking what we can do for our country, what we can do for each other, and what we will do because it is hard, but because we are capable of it, to make life for future generations easier in this country. And when he ignited this um, race to the moon, he ignited a revolution in science and technology that makes it possible for us to, if you get a chance to go uh, downstairs, you will see um, the rocket First of all, uh, the, the, they actually have, it's not a copy, it's the actual rocket that, um, what's his name, Saturn? Alan Thank you, Alan Shepard Saturn. This thing is terrifying and anxiety inducing. <laughs> it is this big and, uh, and uh, as you told me today, the cell phone in my pocket, though I don't have the newest cell phone, so maybe it's not true, but that's all. Uh, the cell phone in my pocket has 40,000 times, 40,000 times the computing power of what this man was sitting in when he had those millions of gallons of jet fuel underneath him. Uh, but what it triggered, what it's now allowed us to do, the world that's now allowed us to build, I think that is the kind of challenge that we need, and that's something that we need our elected officials to push us towards. So if there's anything that I hope um, the Kennedy legacy could, could, could ignite in this generation, it's that same ethic that we need to do things not because they're easy, but because they're hard. Thank you.